This is part two of a two-part series on how to add brushes to Photoshop Elements. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to load brushes temporarily. And we'll look at why many see this as the preferred method for adding brushes. So step one is to create a new folder on your computer for extra brushes. And you also want to give it a name of something so you'll know what's in that folder. I named mine Photoshop Elements Extra Brushes. That folder is on my desktop and it will be for any brushes that did not originally come installed in Photoshop Elements. In other words, brushes that you download from the internet or brushes that you create. Step two is to download some brushes. And this is the same as we saw in part one, where you want to make sure that any brushes you download from a website is a website that you trust. And you also want to make sure that you follow their terms of use, which are usually described on the same page where you download the brush from. And again, I'll be using this uh, set of 50 free brushes that I uh, found a link to on Adobe's website. So I felt pretty safe about using them. And step three is to uncompress the file. Again, we saw this in part one of the video. So when you download these brushes from another website, they're normally compressed into a .zip file, and that looks like this. And then you'll need to unarchive it or uncompress it, however you want to say it. Once you do that, you'll have a .abr file, and that looks like this. It, it's the same exact name with .abr at the end. And then step four is to move the ABR file into the folder that you created in step one. And step five is to load the ABR file into Photoshop Elements. So let's go over to Photoshop Elements and see exactly how to load the new brushes. Here we are in Photoshop Elements, and I'm using Photoshop Elements 11 for this video. First, let's click on the Brush tool to make it the active tool. Now look down in the Tool Options. In older versions of Elements, you can look at the top of the window in the Options bar to see what we're going to look at. Look for the Brush Preview, which is right here. Click on it, and your current brush set will be displayed in a pop-up window. And you can see the name of my set is Default Brushes. Look at the top right corner of that window, and you'll see an icon that looks like a tiny arrow next to four horizontal lines. Click on that, and a drop-down menu will appear. Look down near the bottom of the menu for where it says Load Brushes. Here's a screenshot of where to find this drop-down menu in older versions of Elements, if you're using a version that's older than version 11, which I'm using. Instead of the icon we just clicked on to display the drop-down menu, you'll see this double arrowhead icon. When you click on that, it will display the menu and you can see Load Brushes down near the bottom. Click on Load Brushes and a window will appear so that you can navigate to the folder where your ABR file is. Remember in step one we added a new folder to our computer and then in step four we moved the ABR file into that folder? That's where we want to go now. So my folder is on my desktop which we're looking at here and here's my folder called Photoshop Elements Extra Brushes. I'm going to double click on that so we can see what's inside of it and there's all my extra ABR files and the one I'm looking for is called Media Militia Bling. You can double click on the set that you want to load so I'll double click on this and now it appears as my brush set with a thumbnail of all 50 of the brushes that are included in that set. Let's look at our brush sets again. Click on these so here's all our brush sets. Notice that the brush set that we loaded is at the bottom of the list. Well, that's different from when we installed the brushes in part one of this video. Remember after we installed the ABR file into the brushes folder, we restarted Photoshop Elements, and then when we looked at our list of brush sets, which we're looking at right now, the new set was in the list alphabetically. It wasn't at the bottom of the list like we're seeing now. So now I want you to see what happens to our new set if I switch to a different set of brushes. So I'm going to go up and click on my default brushes. And now all the brushes in that set are displayed for us to choose from. And let's say I want to go back to our new set. So I'll click on the brush set name and our new brush set is no longer at the bottom of the list 
or anywhere in the list for that matter. And that's an important distinction. When we load rather than install our brush set, it's only available to us until we switch to a different brush set. When we come back to the list, it's no longer there. Now we can go back and reload it again if we want, but again we'll only have access to it if we don't switch to a different set. So those are the five steps to loading brushes into Photoshop Elements. Let's review the steps. Step one is to create a new folder on your computer for extra brushes. Step two is to download some brushes. Step three is to uncompress the file. Step four is to move the ABR file into the folder that you created in step one. And finally, step five is to load the ABR file into Photoshop Elements. Earlier, I mentioned that this method of temporarily loading brushes to Photoshop Elements is preferred to the method that we learned about in part one, which is to install the brushes right into Elements. The three main reasons why this method of temporarily loading the brushes is preferred is one, it does not affect the performance of Photoshop Elements. When you install those brushes like we did in part one, they actually are part of the Photoshop Elements uh, program at that point. Some of them can be quite large and make it a little slower. Another reason is the brushes are available immediately without having to restart Photoshop Elements. If you'll recall in part one, we moved the ABR file into our brushes folder, but then you couldn't see them until after you restarted the program. That can be kind of a hassle. And then the third reason is because the extra brushes are kept in a separate folder when you do it this way, and so you know they didn't come with Photoshop Elements. For me, it just kind of helps if I'm looking for a special brush that I know that I downloaded from the internet. I know that it's going to be in that folder on my hard drive of extra brushes. It's not going to be in my brushes folder inside of Elements. It just kind of helps me find those extra downloaded brushes a little easier. That concludes this two-part video series on how to add brushes to Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.